Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Landon with LMR.com. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at SVE's front brake upgrade kit for the 2005 to 2014 S197 Mustangs. Let's get right into it. All right, so what I like about SVE's front brake upgrade kit is that it serves both form and function. Big brakes just look better, and of course, with the uh, six piston caliper and the larger 15 inch rotor, you're gonna reduce your stopping distance. And then of course, if you're driving the car hard at maybe a uh, autocross or road racing event, you know, you'll be able to take it a little bit deeper in the corners uh, if you're chasing a, uh, a faster time. As far as the specifics of the kit goes, we're gonna do a quick rundown of what you get. But if you wanna know a little bit more certain components, I'm gonna leave a link for you down in the video description. Uh, that way you can check that one out. But uh, you're gonna get, I'm calling this gun metal. I think Ford calls it ebony black. Six piston Brembo calipers, the red Brembo lettering. You're gonna get some massive 15 inch rotors, braided stainless brake hoses, banjo bolts, crush washers, caliper retaining hardware, as well as the small brake dust shield, which to me isn't really a brake dust shield. It basically serves as protection for the outer tie rod. The car we're gonna be installing it on, this is a 2013 candy red Mustang GT. And by the looks of it, the, the car is kind of tired. It's got 158,000 miles but uh, there, there's still a lot of life left in this thing. Looking at the stock Brembo brakes, the calipers needed to be refinished. It was pretty much time for a brake job. So uh, what the heck, that was a kind of perfect timing uh, to put our SVE six piston front brake upgrade kit on this particular car. While I'm on the topic of big brakes, this kit also pairs well with SVE's rear caliper adapter that allows you to run the 13.8 inch rotor from the 1314 GT500. So as far as fitment is concerned, like I said, it's gonna fit all 2005 to 2014 Mustangs. The only thing to keep in mind since you're running a larger rotor you're running a bigger caliper you have to keep wheel fitment in mind just because the myriad of options out there when it comes to wheels we can't have this master list to tell you which wheels will work which wheels will not check out the product page for all the uh, fitment notes for this particular kit so uh, enough of my rambling we're gonna go ahead and put a kit on this 2013 GT Go ahead and safely support the vehicle with the lift or get it as high and as safe as you can if you're gonna be working off of jack stands remove both front wheels Turn the steering wheel to the right to have better access to the driver's side caliper bolts. Loosen and remove the caliper bolts with a 15 millimeter socket. Reinstall lug nut to hold the brake rotor in place. Hang the caliper from the spring using a caliper hanger. Loosen and remove the brake hose bracket hold down bolt on the strut with a 10 millimeter socket. Remove the ABS harness from the clips that's attached to the brake hose. Remove the two push pins securing the frame rail splash shield. Loosen and remove the hard line fitting from the brake hose with a 13 millimeter line wrench. Gently lift up on the hard line and cap it. Loosen and remove the 10 millimeter bolt, securing the brake hose bracket to the frame rail. You can now fully remove the caliper from the car. Go ahead and remove the lug nut followed by the rotor. inspect and clean the hub assembly. We needed to replace the ones on this car, and if you need to do the same, check out their dedicated video on hub assembly replacement in the video description. Loosen and remove the three 10 millimeter bolts securing the brake dust shield to the spindle. Verify that you have the correct low profile shield and hold it in place while you install the two 10 millimeter bolts. These low profile brake dust shields only install one way, so you'll know right away if you have the correct side. Torque these to 177 pound inch. Wipe the front and back of the braking surface on the rotor. Apply anti seize to either the face of the hub or the back side of the rotor. Apply anti seize to the hub flange. Install the new rotor and reinstall the lug nut.
Since we're working on the driver's side, we need to verify that we have the driver's side front brake caliper. To do this, take one of the calipers and hold it up as if it was going to be installed on the vehicle. Remember, the brake bleeder screws always face up. Once you verify that you have the correct brake caliper, place it on the workbench. Open the brake pads and lay them out. You'll need to find one with the metal wear indicator and one without. The wear indicator is the outboard pad. The one without the indicator is the inboard pad. Apply a thin film of high temp anti-seize to the back of the pads and to the four contact points on the brake caliper. Position the brake pads into the caliper in the orientation mentioned previously. Hold the pads in place with your hand or use a wedge device to keep them in position. Install the upper pin and tap it into place without fully seating it. Go ahead and install the spring clip into place and hook the tab underneath the upper pin. Push the clip down and slide the other pin through the caliper and pads. Make sure the end of the spring clip fully engages around the lower pin. Carefully tap the pins flush with the caliper with a hammer. A small punch may be necessary so you don't damage the caliper with the hammer. Repeat these steps for the other caliper. Position the driver's side caliper into place and loosely install the caliper bolts. The brake hoses are marked with an L indicating the driver's side and an R for the passenger side. Take one of the banjo bolts and install a crush washer. Position the driver's side hose into place and pass the banjo bolt through the distribution block on the hose. Install another crush washer over the banjo bolt and start the banjo bolt by hand. You want to run this down by hand, but leave it loose. Route the hose towards the hard line at the frame rail. Align the brake hose hold down bracket with the tab on the strut. Reinstall the previously removed bolt and loosely tighten. Install the previously removed retaining bolt and run it down enough to hold the bracket in place. We'll fully tighten the bolt after the hard line is reattached. Remove the cap from the hard line and install this into the brake hose. Start the fitting by hand and make sure it isn't cross-threading. Once you verify proper thread engagement, fully tighten the fitting. Go ahead and torque the banjo bolt to 14 pound-feet. Tighten the brake hose hold down bracket bolt on the strut and frame rail. Install the ABS wire clips onto the rubber grommets and then snap them onto the brake hose. At this time, go ahead and wipe up any brake fluid. You can torque the caliper bolts to 85 pound-feet. Do the same for the other side. Now it's time to bleed the brakes. You'll need some help from a friend to do this. We already have a video covering the brake bleeding procedure for brake calipers with two bleeder screws, and that video will be available down in the description. Once you finish bleeding the brakes, you wanna check over the hard line to brake hose connection and the banjo bolt to make sure there aren't any leaks. Reinstall the wheels and run down the lug nuts. You'll get the car on the ground and then torque the lug nuts to factory spec. Go for a drive and properly burnish the new pads and rotors. Check out the article link in the description for the proper burnishing procedure. After that, you're good to go. All right, folks, we're wrapping things up here. Uh, it's a really good kit. I know me personally, I, uh, I value good braking components, and this is definitely a turnkey bolt-on upgrade for the 2005 to 2014 S197 Mustangs. As always, hope you found value in the video. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way you don't miss any of our future uploads. And until we catch you in the next one, y'all know what to do for all things S197 Mustang. Keep it right here with the Real Enthusiasts, LMR.com.